Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to introduce the final award of the evening, Danielle Carmanos. To tell the truth is one of the first lessons we learn. Honesty is good, lying is bad. I have four young sons over sitting at a table over there, and I dread the days when they will learn that our world is filled with both friends and foes who will favor injustice and lie for self-gain. Even as an adult, it is a crushing reality. Together, we long for a solid foundation and a world where leaders are truth seekers, intent on doing the right thing. We crave the truth, but what would you sacrifice to have it? Would you be willing to go to jail and a foreign prison to stand for the truth? Would you be willing to give your life so my four sons can live in a world where the truth can be set free? Would you give your life for my freedom? It is my incredible honor to introduce a journalist who is sacrificing her freedom so each of you, each of us, can live in a world that is closer to the truth. To me, Maria Ressa is quite simply, as I told her earlier, a superhero. She has the courage to take on corruption and the determination to expose the truth. She has a nearly incomprehensible fearlessness in the face of almost constant death threats and intimidation. She's not naive or cavalier, but so steadfast in her conviction that she can find peace and at times even laughter as the threats of imprisonment loom. She is a light in the darkest moments. And like all top-notch superheroes, she has an absolutely irresistible and nearly perpetual smile. For Maria, it is her extreme intelligence and ability to put the pieces together that give her a perspective to create an undeniable access to truth. As a child, she moved from the Philippines to the United States, quickly assimilating and becoming a leader in her new, in her new world. She was a three-time class president, Princeton graduate, and Fulbright scholar. Her professional career is built on finding the truth while filling a void with leadership and integrity. She started Rappler in 2012, and it quickly became one of the Philippines' most popular and influential media platforms. An out-of-the-box outlet that combines honest reporting while encouraging social activism. She is fearlessly taking on a regime that is leveraging every angle to taunt, tear apart, and terrify her. She is willing to be persecuted and imprisoned to expose a government that is murdering tens of thousands of people without trial or due process. I had a tough time writing my remarks for this evening. I set aside my time to research and write but my own expectations were quickly exceeded, and with every lesson I learned about Maria, I constantly felt myself compelled to sh share her story and stories with a teacher or a leader or a friend, people in positions of authority who will share her stories and inspire the next generation of truth tellers. Her impact is and needs to be constantly far-reaching. So I ask you again, would you be willing to go to jail to protect the truth, to protect the life of the person sitting next to you, or perhaps someone you've never met? It's a nearly impossible moral, di moral dilemma to honestly answer, but I know this for sure. I don't want to imagine a world where we don't have superheroes like Maria Reza who are willing to fight for our freedom. It is with immense gratitude for her convictions that I'd like to introduce this video on Maria Ressa. Uh, what's happening in the world today? If you can make people believe lies are the facts, then you can control them. How do you know what truth is? This is the battle for truth. It is the battle of your generation, mine as well. 
Maria Ressa, the Filipino journalist who stands at five foot two, but she stands taller than so many of us in her courage and personal sacrifice to the cause of telling the truth. Our American social media technology platforms, they are now the world's largest distributor of news, allowing lies to spread faster than facts. A virus has been unleashed in this global body politic, and it is slowly killing us. What you do matters. What you report and how you fight for truth matters. Duterte warned that, quote, just because you're a journalist, you are not exempted from assassination. I was getting 90 hate messages per hour, per hour. We found disinformation networks and began putting it in a database. And at the beginning, all they did was astroturf first on social media, then government comes down. We've never felt it like today because technology has enabled mass manipulation at a scale I could never have imagined. I run a site of about 80 people who are committed um, to doing this. You know, a few months, I've had to post bail eight times. I was arrested twice in a little over a month, so five weeks or so. Um, it's, I don't know what to do with it except right. to hold the line. I am aware of the risks there, but you know, frankly, this is the time to demand an end to the impunity. I have a lot to lose uh, in this, but it's a battle worth fighting. This is the time when we have to fight for the rights that are guaranteed by the Constitution. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 2019 OHI Courage Award recipient, Maria Ressa. Foundation. Oh, it's... Let me get my breath. Uh, thank you for recognizing our work at Grappler. Ohi, no. This is a word that doesn't come easily for many cultures in Southeast Asia. The joke in both Indonesia and the Philippines is that when you hear someone say yes, it could mean yes, maybe, or no. <laughs> uh, we avoid confrontation and our work culture has been described with this acronym you will hear from many Filipinos, SIR, Smooth Interpersonal Relations. Um, it's a very different world that we live in today. I have always said that you do not know who you are until you're forced to fight for it. I think this is one of those moments, the choices you make in this moment in time will define not only who you are, but the kind of world you will create. Journalism is in crisis. We are under attack, not just as sustainable news organizations, but as individual journalists, where online violence easily turns into real world violence. What amazing speech to hear about Jamal Khashoggi. When journalists are under attack, democracy is under attack. Social media platforms are now the world's largest distributor of news, but while they've taken the revenues, they've ignored the most important part, the gatekeeping powers that journalists have traditionally had. It takes courage to fight back against the insidious manipulation that these platforms have enabled. They're now used as weapons against journalists. It's new. These lies laced with anger spread faster than facts. I mean, you kind of know this, right? Facts are kind of boring. And we 
spend our entire careers learning how to tell you a story to make you care. Uh, this time, it hit me last December, just really how difficult this time is for journalists when Time Magazine named the Guardians of Truth. At that point in time, I realized that uh, among the four of us, among the journalists killed at the Capital Gazette, the Reuters journalists who were still in prison in Myanmar at that time, and the brutal murder of Jamal Khashoggi that shook journalists around the world. Well, out of the four of us, I was the only one who was both alive and free. That made me think, never before has our profession demanded so much, this mission to protect the truth. This wasn't what I signed up for more than 30 years ago when I chose to be a journalist, right? Well, this battle for truth, this is not just our battle, it is your battle. It is the battle of our generation. Technology is the accelerant. Now, a lie told a million times becomes a fact. You heard me say it, and I say it all the time. Without facts, we can't have truth. Without truth, there is no trust. Without all of these, democracy as we know it is dead. This is why you are seeing every year for the last three years, democracy being rolled back by cheap armies on social media. In 2017, it was in 28 countries. In 2018, it moved to 48 countries. Just now in 2019, a month ago, Oxford University's Computational Propaganda Research Project put that number at 70 countries around the world. It includes not just my country, but yours. In our country, in the Philippines, the bottom-up exponential attacks on social media, astroturfing and creating this bandwagon effect, they soften the ground before the same lies come top-down from the government. I know this firsthand. In a little more than a year, beginning in January 2018, the Philippine government filed 11 cases against me and Rappler. That's roughly a case a month. You heard me say it, I was arrested twice in a three-week period. I was detained once. I had to post bail eight times in three months. I have committed no crime except to be a journalist. I've seen social media and our legal system weaponize against those who ask questions, who stand up for values, remember those word values, who demand the rights that are guaranteed under our Constitution, which is patterned after yours. We have a Bill of Rights. We have freedom of the press. When I was first arrested early this year, this was in February, and I'll always remember it because it was the day before Valentine's Day, Officers, six officers came into our office. And the, the guy who came up to me said, Ma'am, trabaho lang po. Uh, Ma'am, I'm only doing my job. Then he lowered his voice to, it was almost a whisper when he was reading me my Miranda rights. That's a little bit surreal. But he was really uncomfortable. And I almost felt sorry for him except that he was arresting me, right? I mean, and here's the thing. This is the last act in a chain of events that is meant to intimidate and harass me because I persist in doing my job as a journalist. This officer was a tool of power and an example of how a good man can turn evil and how great atrocities happen. You've heard about this all night, Ochi Day. Hannah Arendt wrote about the banality of evil. She was describing men who carried out the orders of Hitler in Nazi Germany, how career-oriented bureaucrats can act without conscience because they justify that they're only following orders. This is how so many were killed, right? This is how a nation loses its soul. 
Trabaho lang po. I'm only doing my job. Greeks said, Ochi. Today, Ochi is a powerful world. It's a powerful word. But in order to say no, you have to define for yourself. You have to know what values you're fighting for. You have to draw the line where on this side you're good and on this side you're evil. This is clear to us in Rappler. This is why our battle cry is hashtag hold the line, hold the line. This is how we preserve our rights. Um, I've been asked a lot in the last three years because it has been a very long three years. Are you afraid? Are you afraid? Well, yes, there are moments, of course. You know, but I, I was trained to be a conflict reporter. I was a war zone correspondent, and it was my job to plan the way into any battlefield and the way out. Whether it's in the Philippines, in East Timor, in Pakistan, or Kashmir, what I've learned is that fear is a luxury because it spreads, it's debilitating. If you're in the middle of chaos, which we all are right now, you need to stamp down your fear so you can have clarity of thought. See and define the problem. And it, you know, I go back to what I learned as a kid. Whatever it is that I'm most afraid of, I define it, I touch it, hold it, embrace the fear. Because once you do that, nothing can stop you. So in my case, dealing with this fear really started last April. <laughs> really only last April, because for me, I was just doing what I had been taught to do, right? Doing what I had done in 30 years as a journalist, one foot in front of the other. But last April was the launch of the Clooney Foundation's Trial Watch. And for some reason, it hit me then, because I was on a stage where on my right side was Mohammed Fami, who was actually, uh, had been in jail for, I guess, mm, 300 and, uh, if you can go down, let me, 438 days. So he had been in jail for 438 days. He was on my right. On my left was Jason Rezaian. He was jailed in Iran for 544 days. So in that panel, I didn't have it so bad, right? Um, until it was Amal Clooney who actually counted how many years I could go to prison. And she told me, you know, you could go to prison for 63 years. It's older than I am now. So I asked Fami Muhammad, how did you survive? And he like thought for a second, then he said, go get Amal as your lawyer, which I did. Um, and then Jason came out with a book, Prisoner. He gave it to me, and I read it quickly from cover to cover. And reading that book, I sat through and tried to figure out, if I were in their place, what would I do? Could I survive it? What is the worst thing that I can think of? How do I plan for it? Can I get out of it? It took two weeks, but by touching it, embracing it, I robbed the fear of its power. You prepare for the worst, and then you hope for the best, you know? Um, so just two things for you, because you are extremely powerful, and we are in Washington, D.C. We need to demand enlightened self-interest from tech companies. These are Americans' social media platforms. In the long term, yes, we can have education. In the middle term, we can have media literacy, but Right here and now, enough to impact our lives, whether we, whether I go to jail, it's only the platforms, it's only tech that can do something meaningful right now. The longer they wait, the worse it gets. We also need to create a global database of disinformation networks and a global Interpol that stops the impunity that nations and companies are getting away with today. So remember after the Holocaust in World War II, after the, the videos, the horrifying scenes that we saw, 
the world came together to try to stop the worst of human behaviors, the worst of what humanity can do to itself. What did we get? Bretton Woods, NATO, the UN Declaration of Human Rights. This is one of those moments. We need to come together to define what are the values that drive the internet? How do we punish offenders? How do we punish people who manipulate us, countries who manipulate us? Power and bullies will never stop if you give in to them. We at Rappler live this every day. Our battle is your battle. Cambridge Analytica scandal, most compromised accounts are here in the United States. The country with the second most number of compromised accounts on Facebook was the Philippines. Protect the rights guaranteed by our democracies. Or you watch them slowly erode in plain sight. What can we put in place today to protect our tomorrows? This is the challenge for all of us today. This is not, this award isn't for me, it is for the men and women of Rappler. Because while I get the attacks, they do the work every day. They hold the line. Please hold the line. Thank you.